And that's just the same file as yesterday. Yes, yeah, same file. As sorry, yesterday. sorry, Luke. Yeah. Uh, sorry, 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 Matt. Yeah, just confirming that's the same file as yesterday. Yeah. Uh, they should be the exact same files as yesterday. The only change that I have made, Matt, um, is again the um, the super dark profile. Uh, I've brought the fan speed, the cooling fan speed down from the uh, 17,000 to 16,000. And I actually missed a zero off. So Justine came on this morning and just said, hey, look, you missed a zero off. Um, it shouldn't be a thousand six hundred. It should be 16,000. So I've just added a zero on. It's the only change that I've made to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so the, the topics I want to talk about this morning are uh, two more types of um, zone changes that we can make to tune our profiles. And one is cornering, and the other one is power profiling. So um, what I'll do is I'll just start by sharing the screen with uh, this one. Here we go. I think that's happening now. Um, can everyone see uh, a log file? Is that looking good? Mm -hmm. So this is one of um, Wayne's logs that came through. Um, it's one of the, the standard profile set. It is the um, Altitude 1500 to 2000. And what you can see is um, during the main part of the Maillard phase, we're getting really good profile following. Then, as a very typical thing happening around somewhere around the 180 to 190 point, uh, it's starting to creep up off the profile line. Um, but the other thing you notice is that there's quite a sharp corner here. There's quite a sudden change of rate of rise. And you can see that in the rate of rise curve, having a steep vertical cliff face. That indicates that you've got a sharp corner there. And what happens with the Cafe Logic control system is it tends not to get around sharp corners beautifully. What it will do is it will overshoot the corner. And then on the whole, because of a minimum rate of rise setting, which is preventing anti-stall, it also prevents it going past that corner and hooking back and down onto the line. So it tends to go past the corner and then stay above the line. So that's putting in, if you look at the area under the curve, that's putting in quite a lot of extra energy. And so if you decide that you need to bring that back to a point where it actually follows the curve around and doesn't go that high. Um, obviously, at this point here where we've got an exothermic um, burst, we could start to apply a negative boost zone which would start bringing the power curve down more. Um, it's not going to fix the overshoot problem, though. The overshoot problem is really defined um, a, a, a by being a corner. Now, what the corner setting does, um, a corner is set up with just two numbers, which are times. There's a start and a finish time for the corner. And what, what it basically means is that the control system at the start time being hit, instead of using the slope of the profile curve, in real time, it looks forward to the end point and uses that slope as its desired target slope. Um, so in this case here, if we started the corner at six minutes and we finished the corner 
at, let's just make sure that we're around the corner. We're looking down here on the rate of rise. Make sure we're properly around the corner. We really need to be like 6.35 before we know we're properly around the corner. So if we ended it at 6.35, what it means is that from this point here, the roaster is already starting to behave as if it was following that curve. And so it will basically start the curve early and would probably come around to being pretty much on online. So 30 seconds is quite a long time and I'm going to be finishing it at 6.35. So I might start it at 6.05. So I would corner from 6.05 to 6.35 in here to try and address that, that problem. It means it would start here. It wouldn't address the initial rise here, but it would address the overshoot up here. Does that make sense? So that was a 6.05 to 6.35. So we'll move into edit mode. Pop over to the profile settings and Can I just um, ask, do we need to be in a particular difficulty level to do corners and so on? Or? Corners are, are advanced level. Okay, yeah. 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 So I've just put in a 605 and a 635, and that would basically Help with the cornering. Now I'm going to have to experiment and see how it goes. I might end up wanting to start a little bit earlier. I might want to start a little bit later, depending on how the, the cornering goes. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to show you was uh, uh, new share. Here we go. Um, This takes me a moment to get a share going. Um, so this is from the Cafe Logic Roasters Companion, and it's another example of a corner. And in this case, you can see the overshoot is actually quite small, but once it's overshot, it's just cruising above the line consistently. So it is really worth addressing this corner. And here, the corner start and finish uh, was seven. 14 and 732. So the idea was that we, we made sure we were just past the corner. So we picked up the right slope and then we came back to a point which is early enough. In this case, it's only 15 seconds. It's going to be somewhere between 15 and 30 seconds that we pick to, to start the corner. Um, and in this particular case, when we re-ran, we actually have a before and after. We re-ran it and it follows really quite well. So it gets around the corner really nicely. Um, in this particular example, in the Roaster's Companion, both of those um, adjustments that I mentioned earlier, which is the negative boost at exothermy and a corner have been applied to get it to follow the curve. Now, of course, getting it to follow the curve isn't necessarily the answer and you can see from what um what wayne has done with with that profile is that he's not requiring that the curve is followed he, he's quite happy to set the parameters up in, in the profile file um, to deliver the flavor that he wants to deliver and being on the line doesn't deliver the flavor the coffee delivers the flavor so um uh that that's the other side of all of this is that don't get hung up on getting the red line onto the blue line, get hung up on the flavor. If getting the red line onto the blue line helps, then that's what these adjustments are for. Um, but they're not there to be applied just because the lines don't match. They're to be applied because you're not getting what you want out of the roast. So that's that's a, a, a brief introduction to cornering. Is there any question or something that I need to explain in a bit more detail? So 
So because the line was following the other line, that's why you chose to go for putting a corner in rather than the negative boost on your previous example. On the previous example, um, let me just go back to sharing that previous example. I'll just open the log. Now, the, re the, the thing is, if I want that red line to follow that blue line, I will need to do both things. I will need to put in the negative boost, and I would probably put it in back here somewhere around 5 minutes 30. Um, and I would need to put in the corner. Now, in this example, I just showed you putting in the corner. Um, and that's partly motivated by the fact that in our previous class, we discussed the fact that um, putting in a negative boost at that point of exothermy doesn't necessarily result in an improvement in flavour. It can, in fact, be um, to the detriment of flavour. So that's why you might decide that you're not interested in putting in the negative boost because you don't want to inhibit that little rise there but you still want to corner because you want to start cornering earlier so you can actually follow that line rather than sit, because that's quite a few degrees above the line. That's 206.8, uh, and the line is at um, about 203.2, so that's three or four degrees above the line. Um, and so if that's putting too much energy in, um, I don't know, Wayne, if you want to comment on, briefly on how that might affect flavour and whether you would, in fact, be inclined to, to put a corner in here or whether you would just say, no, it's doing what you want to do, leave it alone. Um, Chris, yes. So um, I would be inclined to put a corner in there, especially because you've got a 3.2 degree shift. Um, from profile to temperature, I would be inclined to put a corner in. Um, a previous log of this, or the previous example of this, was to try and corner and to put a corner in. Um, so what I found with the corner is, and this, this is just my observations from the roast and the taste, is what I found from the corner is, if you, if you go slightly further on to first crack and you pull first crack down to your ROR, what I found is if I didn't have, if I had a corner in and I had a negative boost, what I found was um, I would have a bigger dip and flick um, at my first crack. So I chose from a flavor perspective and tasting that um, profile, and I obviously tasted that profile kind of three days, four days, five days, six days, I cupped it tasting that profile and then cupping the profile that you see right now, or sorry, cupping the log that you see right now, I found that I had a lot more would be probably, I mean, how do you quantify a lot more? I had a better flavor profile, a richer, fuller taste, uh, and a flavor profile when I, when I removed the negative and when I removed the corner. Um, so that three degrees for me was aiding. It was aiding in applying enough extra energy into the coffee so when it reaches that exothermic release which is the first crack um, it had enough to shorten or to minimize the effect that the dip in the flick has on flavor yeah so what you can see in this um in this log is there really was no um appreciable crash flick going on um, so I think, uh, 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 is it right, what you're saying, Wayne, is that if you went in and very carefully applied a negative boost and a corner to this profile, that you would get the red line to go back on the blue line, but you'd get a crash flick down here. That's definitely what I've found on, on both, and it's definitely what I've found, Chris, on uh, many of the profiles where I have applied cornering, where I've tried to corner, 
Um, and I mean, you and I had a discussion a while ago about, you know, would I take a profile like that? Would I add a corner to a profile like that? How would I add and, and what that corner would look like? And I think that was my, my big understanding is, is not just applying a corner, but what that corner actually looked like. So was it a, for example, I'll take you back to, uh, I know I'm repeating myself, but I'll take you back to kind of our, our discussion we had before was, would it be a 90 degree kind of corner? Or would it, what, what would the corner look like? Um, and after understanding that a little bit better, um, I realized that applying a corner to a profile like this really meant that I would get a, a bit of a detriment to flavor. So I removed the corner and used a little bit of heat, a little bit more heat, more of an intent heat going into first crack to actually pull, pull out a little bit more flavor. Yeah. Um, in but saying so that, in saying, so what you're saying is that the red line is where you want the roast to be and it doesn't have to be on the blue line because that's where you want it to be. Chris, that's exactly what I'm saying. Um, yeah. previous, previous roasting always tells you that, that you have to get the red line on the blue line. The red line has to follow the blue line. You know, never below, always on top. That's kind of the, the lesson that we teach ourselves. With, with classical roasting and that's just because it's a lot harder to get the blue line it's a lot harder to get the red line down to the blue line um sorry sorry it's a lot harder to get the the red line um uh, below the blue line and to get that red line up through the blue line um when you're classically roasting and you're roasting on a drum roaster because your drum roaster does not or i'm talking about a, a classic drum roaster something with a real thick chamber and and low burners is it doesn't react at the speed that we need it to react so the minute your profile goes above the blue line we're already almost two minutes deep into the roast and what have we affected in those two minutes so you're always trained to stay on the blue line above the blue line never below the blue line um and and with the cafe logic you almost think the same if you're classically trained as a roaster and you try to adapt the same method to say the red line has to be on the blue line, the quantity has to be on the blue line, but to what detriment of flavor? Um, and what we find with these type of profiles is if it's above the red line, uh, sorry, if it's above the blue line and it's giving us beautiful flavor, is it wrong, you know? Exactly. Um, and, and also when you look down here and you look at actually the, um, the actual rate of rise line is behaving itself beautifully, um, do we really want to mess with that by trying to put in some adjustments up here? So, um, okay, so that's um, pretty much that 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 topic. Um, Can I just um, ignore this if you're um, pressed for time, but I've just shared a log with one of the uh, new profiles. And it goes above the line, the red line goes above the blue line before first crack. And it looks like, I don't know, I guess I'm wondering whether there's a bit of a crash in the rate of rise that you would try to eliminate through a, a negative boost. Um, and anyway, we can come back to that later if you. Um, no, I'm, I'm inclined to just open that up. Um, Matt. So that's shared on the chat if anyone wants to open it up, log 79. <coughs> and it's uh, Peru, one of the same ones that uh, we were looking at the other day. So with that, I've just opened that up on our shared, you should be able to see it on the share. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I'm so looking at that crash just after seven minutes. Is that, that, that that's a big crash, isn't it, Wayne? Which is pretty much right at first crack, isn't it? Sorry, let me just I'm just opening it up, Matt. Let me just have a look at that. Sorry, yes, that's that's that, that's a huge crash. Absolutely, absolutely, that's that's a huge crash. Yeah. Could that be helped by applying a negative boost because it goes above the line prior to that? Um, so there's there's two. Chris, do you want to do you want to answer that, or are you okay if I if I if I answer that? Uh, I think that's a 
one for you to answer, really, Wayne. I mean, I, I, I can see that you could be putting in a negative boost here at 180 degrees. It would be great at five minutes to put in a negative boost to get that to follow the line better. But is that advisable? So, so Matt, if, if, if I could just weigh in, if, if you allow me to. So, um, you could put a negative boost in there. The problem with the negative boost is, is effectively what a negative boost is telling you is the negative boost is telling you, hey, listen, take me down to the line, which means that effectively, um, and, and we, we've got to understand how the roaster is taking us down to the line. So what's the roaster, what does the roaster have to do to take us down to the line? It's got to effectively not roast at the capacity that it's roasting. It's, that makes sense. I mean, that's the only way that it can take the heat down to the line. So what you're losing is, is you're effectively losing heat in the beam. Now, if we look at that, if we had to apply a negative boost to that, we could see two things. We could see an evening out of energy, but we could also see a slump of energy. So what happens is that your, your drop over there, your dip over there could be even greater than that if you had to put a, a negative boost on there. I would say, I would say what we could do, and this is just a suggestion, I would have to play around with it, uh, but you could actually add in a zone boost um, around about that seven minute mark, which is looks like to me that seven minute mark is, if I'm looking at it, seven minute mark is 30, 20, 23 seconds before your first crack, your logged first crack. And that zone boost might actually be able to boost the power slightly to get us a bit more exothermic into that, which is then nullifying the effect of that different flick. So we could do two things. We could add a negative boost in, which honestly I wouldn't do, um, but we could also add in a zone boost, which is a positive boost, which will boost it up. Also. I don't know if the zone boost, and this is where you probably have to do two to three rows of this. I don't know if the zone boost acting 20 seconds before first crack will actually work, or if the zone boost 40 seconds before first crack will work, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Generally, what I would do is I'd start 40 seconds before first crack, and then I'd go almost 20 seconds into first crack, and I would then end my zone boost on that. Now, what that does for me in my mind is all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to nullify the effect of that dump and flip. That's all I'm trying to do. And how I do that is by putting a little bit more energy into that first crack, into that, uh, applying a little bit more energy to get into that exothermic mass, um, which should do that. Now, yes, of course, that's, that's, you know, the graph's going to look exactly the same to a point where the profile doesn't dip. I mean, you can visually see there that the Peru is really not responding well to that. So, Wayne, I, I guess in, in terms of you analysing this, I'd be looking at the power curve, and you can see that there's a big dip here. Like the power is dropping, 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 dropping quite steeply from here to here. And you really want to stem that reduction in power. I would be thinking you want to start somewhere maybe halfway down that slope, which would be about 6.45. And I'll, I'll be thinking of starting a zone there. And it's even something you could think about power profiling. You could see how from there, this profile now runs pretty well flat. What you could do at that point there is you could actually turn off um, PID altogether and actually have a zero percent change in power right through to the end of the roast. That would might be worth an, a, a, as an option as well. Okay, I don't know much about how that. So that's it's not a good or a bad thing to have power flatlining like that. No, it's not, Matt. You know what? It's, it's actually, in this instance, actually good because what it's doing is it's just preventing the power from dipping. Um, and we can see the power is dipping. So we've got to ask ourselves the question, you know, um, if we have to take that Peru and we have to use it, we have to use this profile on the Peru, how is the Peru responding to the profile? And mm -hmm. what do we need to adjust before we get into that exothermic kind of phase? So if I was to take you back to, 
Um, mm. I mean, I'm not, the blog's not open now, but if, I, if we're at 6.41 on Chris's power line there, if I had to take you back another almost 20 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds, we're sitting at about, even back further, we're sitting at a slight jump of power. Now, if you look up at the profile, you'll see that there's another little dink, there's another little drop in power. Now, that probably is affecting that first crack dump and flick, if that makes sense. So there also lies your problem in how to resolve that. So, you know, if we added a power curve into that, for example, just using power curve and, uh, sorry, just your, your positive curve, for example, your positive boost, you know, we would get a lot more energy into our exothermic. In saying that, I wouldn't use a power curve from there because it's, <laughs> it's not necessary. I would use the power curve exactly what Chris says from about that 640, which will again mm. give you that 40 second before your first crack. Well, what you, you could do, Wayne, is you could come on to power profiling right back at five minutes 30 and keep it on right to the end of the roast. Mm -hmm. um, basically drawing a straight line from that point there to that point there. Yeah. So by connecting those two with a straight line, you take out this little dink in here and the big dink in here, and it would just be a straight line all the way down. I'm sorry if you've already covered this for others, but uh, is that something we're supposed to be able to do pretty easily? Uh, I, I'm supposed to be teaching you how to do it today, but okay. now that we're running out of time, I might actually have to do that tomorrow. Well, but sorry, we've set but... ourselves we set ourselves a target that I can teach you how to put how to make a straight line in the power curve from there to there tomorrow using your example, um, and then you can try the um, the roast and see whether you're getting a better or a worse result. Mm -hmm. But I won't, I won't embark on showing you how to do it just now because we're going to run out of time and that would just leave it muddly. Um, but we can use that as our, as our subject tomorrow and set that up. Um, see how that See how that goes. Now, um, Wayne, just uh, um, another question about the scenario, though, that, that Matt's in, assuming that he's not um, uh, wanting to go editing profiles, and so he's just roasted his Perot on 1200 to 1500, and he's got this big crash. Should he then try roasting it on the next profile up, i.e. the 1500 to 2000 profile? So if it was me doing it, and, and uh, sorry for saying that, I mean, if it, was, if it was a case of, do we look at a profile for it? Um, I would definitely say, yes, maybe try roast it. Well, it just all depends on how it tastes, quite honestly, Chris, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if Matt tastes it and it, it tastes, really flat to taste like not the Peru that he's used to, that he's used to I would definitely think that him roasting that Peru uh, on the higher profile would be able to resolve that um, yeah. so I'm just trying to pull up my, my notes now so that I can see that in saying that though Matt I mean what what altitude is that Peru what what altitude bean is that is the fit within that 1200 to 1500 I don't know. I mean, what I did was Googled Peru Contiki and the best I could find was pretty generic um, and a 1200 to 1500 ish. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so that's what but, I used. But, okay. So what I'm thinking here in terms yep. of profile choice, Wayne, we've got a, yep. a coffee we don't know its altitude. We've run it on our best guess altitude and Arguably, we can see from the log it hasn't responded beautifully to that profile. It would make sense, wouldn't it, to now try some of the other profiles and see if it responds better? Mm -hmm. Well, would yes, you it would. Do that, or would you actually just try roasting it with exactly the same settings in case someone switched on lights or something? Uh, no, I really do think this is the coffee. Um, and not the power supply, um, Justine. Yeah. Um, 
we can often see if we look into the voltage um, if there is no, I, can tell you, I, was, um, I was roasting quite late at night and everyone else was in bed so. yeah no there doesn't seem to be any um, anything yeah, weird showing in the, in the volts no. there so no. So, so I mean, to answer the question, sorry, Chris. Um, we're we're going to need to wrap up, but uh, yeah. What so, we'll do is we'll so just sorry. continue this tomorrow, and we'll look at setting up uh, a power profile tomorrow for this. And I see you've posted one as well, Ange, and we'll look at that tomorrow as well. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Well, look. Thanks for joining us, folks. And uh, we'll, yeah, part two tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.